And we are back at it on a Monday, Monday, the 15th day of October 2015. Wake Up Bonanche Valley is on the air. Thanks for starting your work week with us here on the NCB Life Channel. I am Dan Koontz, your host, News Guy. Steve Hare is known as News Guy. Steve Hare, he's to my immediate left, cat in control. And a good Monday to you. You too, Dan. Did you have a good weekend? I had an outstanding weekend. Played a little golf, I know. I, I went out and hit a, well, I didn't actually get to go out on the golf course, but I did hit a bucket of balls on a Sunday morning. I, we mentioned this on Friday. We knew that the weather was going to be just fantastic this Which weekend. Which it was. And it was, and I just, there was just no way I could spend Saturday and Sunday indoors. It was just, it wasn't going to be in the game plan. So I, I spent pretty much all day Saturday and most of Sunday uh, outside enjoying this beautiful area in the beautiful valley and the park and I went down to the Hale Off Leash Park just to, well, I don't have a dog, I just went down there hopping with people mm -hmm. on Saturday morning and I hiked down to the, walked the trail down to Pibus, it was hopping with people. And it was just a, it was a beautiful weekend, gorgeous weekend. Well, you know, the days are getting numbered as far as uh, nice sunny days, oh, so no. take advantage of it while you can. We got tons of it, oh, all the way through <laughs> next week. Oh, well, you're going to love this <laughs> forecast, you're going to love this forecast. Uh, chilly at night. In fact, we hit 32 for the overnight low yesterday morning. It was chilly, but once the sun uh, made its presence felt, we warmed up to 60 yesterday. We'll be mid to upper 60s by the end of this week with gobs of gooey good sunshine. High pressure is large and in charge and it's building up in strength. So we're in for a long stretch of gorgeous weather. Stay close for those details. Steve has your Monday morning news. Fairly busy weekend around the Wenatchee Valley, North Central Washington. Steve will fill you in on what happened. We got sports, a lot of sports highlights. The Wenatchee Wild got their rings and raised their banners and played Nanaimo on Friday night. We'll have highlights of that. Also uh, highlights from Friday night's very exciting football game that we covered between Eastmont and Sunnyside. We'll have that. Seahawks had a good Sunday oh, morning in wow. London. What a good, and the uh, Sunday night game was really exciting. I didn't it? watch any of it. Yeah, 43 I watched, I watched to baseball. 40. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I missed Patriots one. Patriots over, uh, over Kansas City. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and a yeah, last-minute field goal. I, I'm sorry. I, I was watching baseball. because yeah, it was I, a good game. I think I'm the only person in this entire building. <coughs> There's about 100 of us <coughs> in this building that actually watches postseason baseball. I think <laughs> I'm it. Anyway, uh, we also have the obscure holiday today in history. Birthdays, everybody is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Darcy Christofferson, the interview I did with Darcy a couple of weeks ago, the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival Administrator, will be dropping by. Their big annual auction is Saturday, October 27th. See if we can get some tables sold and get tickets sold with Darcy. We'll get an update with her uh, coming up. So what did you do this weekend? Well, if it involved any exertion at all, mm -hmm. I was not involved. Not involved. In not involved at all. So. No, no. I, uh, very sedate weekend, very okay. relaxing weekend, as a matter of fact. Okay. I, I, I stepped outdoors a couple of times. That's good. For the most part, I was, you know what I do. So you did not move the billiard table from the basement to the attic? No, no, Is that no, what no, you're telling no, me? No. That's going to have to wait for another time. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's why you have big strapping sons to take care that's of. That's right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Three minutes after the hour, uh, we are about 15 minutes away from sunrise, but the sun is already beginning to make its presence felt. Let's go around the valley with our Valley View cameras. Just a few high clouds uh, this week, and that is really about it. Uh, clear, dry, light winds. Just the only thing out there is, is these overnight lows, these chilly temperatures. And some beautiful colors. Oh, gorgeous. We're at the absolute peak yep. of fall color right now. Everywhere you go, uh, it's just beautiful. Drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And they haven't quite fallen on the ground yet. Uh, the tree in front of my house has changed color, but the leaves are still hanging on for yep. dear life. Yep. So we like that. Uh, that is, of course, our cross camera. All of these cameras, courtesy of Localtel's Sky-Fi high-speed wireless internet network. That means you can get super fast internet without having to have fiber run to your home. If you can look outside your door and see the cross camera, that means you can get Sky-Fi. And, and mm -hmm. all of these locations, all of these locations you're going to see are Sky-Fi towers, and it's just simply a line of sight. What catches your eye, Steve? Well, just the brand new asphalt you know, <laughs> mission. I love it, you know. All they Driving gotta, in every morning, mm -hmm. and it's uh, really a nice job they did on that. All they got to do is stripe it, and that's about it. That's it, and that's coming up uh, in the coming few days. It's understand. funny, you brought that up. On Mission Street between, uh, let me think real quick, 5th and 9th, the street lights are not on. I, I don't know if they had to unhook those for whatever reasons, oh. but just that one block, the street the signals, lights The traffic signals? No, 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 the street lights. Oh, the street not lights. Not the stop lights, okay, right, okay. the street lights. They're off. You cut, yeah. So you drive through brightness in the in dark and then brightness again. I, huh. I don't know why. Uh, we'll look into that. Camera number two. Well, Steve will look into that. Beautiful downtown Wenatchee. Zoomed in a little bit to that grain tower. We talked about this a, a few months ago. Do they still use that? Oops, I, I don't know. 
I, I'm assuming that's a grain silo, that big tall thing. I don't even know what that is. I, yeah, I, I, I think, think it's, it's a grain silo. silo. Uh, I'm curious as to whether uh, they use it or not. You can see the parking lot of encouraging words down there, and that, of course, reminds me that Night in a Box is coming up Ooh, in November. One cold, chilly evening. Yeah, it always is. So good shot of downtown when you morning commute on the south end of town's Looking pretty, Looking pretty good. good across the Cellar Bridge there, too. Mm -hmm. Just a light volume of traffic coming That's in. That's a good shot there, Cat. I like that zoom in. That's a good look. Cam camera 3 is a shot of the Waterville camera looking down at beautiful Anniette, the gateway to recreation. There were some houses way up in those foothills above Anniette mm -hmm. with some spectacular views, oh, just incredible views. Uh, Anniette continues to grow and thrive. It was a good thing that they moved Anniette when the you know, Rocky Reach Reservoir went in, you know, and Antioch, the original town, was basically drowned mm -hmm. in water. I'm glad they moved it, you know, because yeah. that would have been really bad. I'd like to see them bring back the ferry, though, wouldn't you? Well, it has to be, it has to serve a purpose of some kind or another, except tourists. I'm sure it'd be great during those times when they have 97A shut down, you know, mm -hmm. have a nice little ferry option, maybe. I, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Good shot of Antioch. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us, Antioch, on this beautiful Monday morning. Camera 4. Is it dissolved too? Now we're getting, Cat's going to move this, so I figured out where the heck we are. I think this is our new camera that we have positioned above the Peshastan area, and I'm pretty sure that's it. As that we pan is, the cascades. That's Leavenworth that you see down there. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, that camera's been up and running for, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks until we finally discovered, hey, we have a camera here too. And again, as I mentioned mm -hmm. at the top of the show, if you go outside of your house and you can see this ridgetop, you can get SkyFi. In fact, if you look directly uh, just up from Leavenworth there, isn't that Tumwater Mountain? That's where mm -hmm. our other camera is located, isn't That's it? correct, yep. Yep, right on that ridge, right yeah, before you right enter there. the Tumwater mm -hmm. Canyon. That's good stuff. I, that's going to be one of my, quickly going to be one of my favorite cameras. Yeah. That's a beauty. Next, good right stuff. next to Billy Goat. Huh? Right next to Billy Goat. Uh, Billy Goat's still my favorite, but this one's pretty close. And by the way, Leavenworth, um, coming up this weekend, mm -hmm. big festival. I didn't want to. No. Didn't want to. Yeah, didn't want to forget that. No kidding. Yeah, they got something going on. I don't know. Um, they don't do that very often. You know, Leavenworth's kind of a quiet uh, town with not a lot happening on weekends. But uh, no, this weekend they got something going on. I don't know what it is. I think it's Oktoberfest. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's continuing. You. Yes. <laughs> let's let's take a look at your forecast from the National Weather Service. Da 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 da. I want to take full credit for this, by <laughs> the way. 63 are our forecast high today, which is just about normal. We only hit 60 on Sunday, Steve, but it sure felt nice. It felt warmer than 60, didn't it? You go out there yeah. in the sun, sunlight, and it just felt really... For that brief period of time that I was outdoors, yes. Yeah, for the brief period of time you were outdoors. <laughs> uh, we did have a frost advisory. That's been canceled. Don't have to worry about that anymore. So there is your forecast. Again, high-pressure ridge is, is large and in charge. A couple of high clouds here and there. That's really it. Very little wind. Absolutely no rain in the forecast. Nothing's really going to disturb this high-pressure ridge all of this week and into this weekend. And we are in for another beautiful weekend. Again, it's really hard to stay inside uh, with this kind of weather. It just, I mean, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at 68 on Friday. I'm thinking golf. I'm thinking something. Yeah. You know, we'll anything. A little, little hunting in. Yeah, no, I, I you know. know. There's a lot of hunting right now. It's the yeah. uh, mule deer season just started up. I'm not a hunter. I saw Eric and Marion were out. Yeah, yeah, they were out hunting. And Twisp. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, I just assume play golf when I can. Oh, I hear you. So, you know, they're, they're kind of the same sport if you think about it. They're, they can both be terribly frustrating and terribly humbling. That's true. You know, um, you're both outside. If you're very competitive, but if you're out there just for the walk in the park, uh -huh. it's a great, right. a lot of fun. Right. Scoring and is secondary right. to that walk in the park. Yeah. And when I golf, of course, I wear a bright orange jacket because I don't want to get hit by other golf balls. I, I want always to be seen found that when I golfers. golf alone, I score better, too. You notice that? Yeah, for yeah, some reason. <laughs> I've noticed the older I get, the better I used to be. That's what I've <laughs> discovered on the golf course. It's nine minutes after the hour. We're going to take a one-minute break, and Steve Hare will have your Monday morning news when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live this morning from Studio 15 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life channel. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by LocalTel. The Red Cross Confluence Health Blood Drive is this Friday from 10 to 3 in the LocalTel Event Center at Pipus Public Market. To register, visit redcrossblood.org. The Nooks and Crannies Tour at Wells House is this Friday and Saturday. This is an exclusive tour of the castle at Wenatchee Valley College that includes floors usually restricted to the public. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. 
The NCW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Well, here we go on this Monday, October 15th. Good morning and welcome back to the program. Here's what's happening around North Central Washington today. First of all, from Sunday, emergency crews responded in the afternoon to a two-vehicle accident that resulted in one of the vehicles crashing into the side of a bank. It happened in that one o'clock hour at the intersection of Mission and Fifth Streets. Now, the photo you're looking at here was shared with NCW Life News on the Wenatchee Valley Crime and Events Facebook page. Thanks to Hannah Deltron Granger for sharing that sh uh, shot with us. Now, witnesses say the small red compact car collided with that Banner Bank building after it was struck by a truck in the intersection. There's no information right now regarding possible injuries. It appeared, according to witnesses, that people got out okay. Uh, we are awaiting more details on that uh, crash and the cause from the Wenatchee Valley Police Department. So we'll have that for you coming up on our NCW Live Evening News, starting at 5 with Grant Olson. Also from Friday, Wenatchee police arrested a man and woman suspected in a series of recent vehicle prowls and thefts. 23-year-old Michaela Leonardo from Visalia, California, and 31-year-old Patrick Malone, local man from Wenatchee, facing multiple charges. It happened last Thursday when officers responded to a call of suspicious behavior at the Holiday Lodge on North Wenatchee Avenue. Suspects had left the hotel before officers arrived. The caller said he believed Leonardo and Malone had entered several rooms. Officers eventually located the pair and some property in nearby shrubs. Also, Malone had a silver laptop in his possession. Later, while talking with other officers, responding police learned a silver laptop had been taken in a vehicle prowl the previous day. They returned to the area where the two suspects were contacted, but they had already left. But in the same shrubs, they found property that was linked to several vehicle prowls and thefts during the past several weeks. Officers began checking pawn shops to see if the laptop had been pawned. Well, the uh, business pawn fathers and their employees had a couple matching the description of Leonardo and Malone, came in Wednesdays with two bikes to pawn, one of which police recognized as recently reported stolen. Pawn Fathers video footage showed Leonardo and Malone bringing in the stolen bicycle. Now, during that transaction, um, Leonardo used identification that had been stolen during that vehicle prowl, and that was in Carson, Washington. Short time later, Leonardo and Malone were spotted walking along North Wenatchee Avenue. At that time, both suspects were cuffed. They were booked into Chelan County Regional Jail. Police say they recovered evidence related to several vehicle prowls <clears throat> uh, in the Wenatchee area. Also on Wednesday of last week, Department of Natural Resources Commissioner Hillary Franz laid out a plan to reduce wildfires through forest management and increase response capabilities through more full-time DNR firefighters training and air assets. Uh, the $55 million spending plan doubles the state's wildfire fighting budget. <clears throat> Franz said it will improve response time and create healthier forests. The DNR responded to 1,700 wildfires in 2018, second most fires on record, and uh, a greater portion of fires are occurring in western Washington. Nearly 39% of wildfires this season were west of the mountains, a record high. Now, the plan would make 30 seasonal firefighters permanent, allowing them to thin, overly dense, unhealthy forests when not on the fire lines. Also, the state apple maggot quarantine has been extended into parts of Okanagan County. State Department of Agriculture announced last Thursday it's the latest effort to slow the spread of the invasive pest and to protect commercial apple production. As of November 9th, the quarantine includes the Methow Valley, north of Gold Creek in Okanagan County. State considered adding the area this summer 
<clears throat> After surveys provided evidence, the apple maggot population had spread into portions of Okanagan County. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the quarantine prohibits uh, anyone from moving homegrown or forged fruit from a quarantined area into or through a pest-free area. The quarantine affects both household waste and municipal green waste, including yard debris like grass, clippings, fruit, soil, and leaves, as well as woody debris such as branches and twigs. Elsewhere, the median price for a home in the Wenatchee area held steady for the third straight month at about $335,000 in September, but the number of homes sold fell to 87. That's down from 98 in August. A year ago, the median price for a home was $290,000. Now, the monthly report from Pacific Appraisal Associates showed homes continued to sell for 98% of their listing price. Now, the number of active listings for homes was at 213 in September. That's up slightly from 210 in August. Now, the report includes Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Malaga, Arondo, and Rock Island. The vacancy rate for all housing continued to be low at 2% with a 3% vacancy rate for single-family homes, 2% for multi-family homes. On the health front, Medicare's 2019 annual open enrollment period for prescription drug plans and Medicare Advantage plans starts today. It'll run through December 7th. Washington State Insurance Commissioner's Statewide Health Insurance Benefits Advisors, or SHEBA, uh, program is ready to provide Medicare counseling to help in local communities. Local advisors can answer your Medicare questions and help you search for plans online that work best for your personal situation. Well, finally, NCW Life caught up with Governor Jay Inslee Friday morning during his visit to Wenatchee. His visit included discussions with local health care officials regarding behavioral health and a tour of the soon-to-be-opened Parkside Treatment Facility that he calls a model for the state of Washington. A couple things. First off, that we're expanding services in the Wenatchee Valley is really exciting because we know we have huge demands in this valley for mental health, for our children, for uh, opioid problems. We got a lot of demands. So expanding services is great. I'm glad the state has been able to help. I think there's about $4 million in this facility of state money. So we're great that we're expanding services, number one. Number two, it's a beautiful facility where people will feel uh, comfortable and and positive and optimistic it's just a place that physically people makes you feel good about uh, your future and that's really uh, helpful third i do think this is uh, an example of what we want to do which is to make our mental reform our mental health system so it's more community based so we provide people treatment where they live close to their family their church their place their schools uh, so i think it is a, a model I just got some great ideas about how to make it even more effective, and we'll be chewing on them as we go through this reform process. I was going to say, do you foresee this as being an issue coming up in the upcoming session? Oh, very much so. This is going to be one of the hot uh, issues in our legislative session about how to increase our access to mental health and how to reform the system so that it is more accessible to, to communities around the state. So you can get mental health treatment for your family in a place that's closer to your community. And this will be something that will be uh, both uh, a promise and a challenge because we'll have to figure out how to finance this. It takes dollars to build these facilities. We have to find out a way to finance that. But I do think there's a, a good start of bipartisan discussions where both parties can commit to really advancing mental health in our state. All of our families are subject to this. Now, the governor in his visit to Wenatchee also hosted a roundtable discussion on behavioral health issues with officials from Confluence Health. All in all, a very, uh, very productive uh, visit to mm -hmm. Wenatchee. Uh, price tag, certainly, is going to be pretty exorbitant uh, for the Wenatchee, or sh I should say the state legislature, to digest $1.5 billion for mental health going forward. So that's a pretty steep price tag, but, you know, it's one of the big issues. Yeah, it's obviously a need. In Washington State right now. So. But anyway, yeah, good to, always, good to, always good to have a chance to talk with the governor. Yes, yes. Uh, 19 minutes after the hour. Don't forget, we're getting our flu shots on Friday, Steve. That's right. Right here. Company's right. paying for it, too. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! And this is the time of the year. Get your flu shot. That's the number of people I've uh, talked to have had the shot and had some reactions, so I'm not too sure. Okay. 
I, I think I'll, I'll take my chances. I don't I want the too. flu. I absolutely. So, Last year I had the pneumonia. So yeah, I remember I'm that. I'm not taking any chances. It's pronounced pneumonia, by the way. There you People go, yeah. always mispronounce that. <laughs> and I feel sorry for the, the person who has to administer the flu shots to us here in the office on Friday. Yeah. Because that's not easy. No. No, it's not easy, um, especially for me. I mean, it's not, I don't mind getting the shot. We used to do it on the air, remember the yeah. video? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about me getting the shot. I'm talking about the person administering the shot because, of course, you have to roll up your sleeve. And, yeah. you know, she usually takes one look at that big muscular bicep of mine and she can't concentrate on because, you know. Oh, okay. So you yeah. take it in your arm. Yeah, I take it in the arm. Okay. So. Not some they, they won't let you do it in the tushy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the news with Grant Olson comes your way. We're talking to a human pincushion here, my friend. <laughs> Five o'clock, six o'clock, and ten o'clock. Cat says it's way too early for that kind of humor. <laughs> Five, six, and ten. Grant Olson with the news. Eric Grandstrom with sports. What happened on this Monday? We'll put it together in a little package for you. Five, six, and ten available on demand on our website, available on demand on our Facebook page. And those are just two of the many tools that we have made available for you, our viewers, to get a hold of us. <laughs> news guy, Steve Hare. <laughs> That's your cue, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got, I'm still Friday, huh? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, you're supposed to tell well, you're people. You're just too glib. You know? <laughs> Hard to keep up with Dan on a Monday morning. NCWLife.com. That's our website. You can talk to us there. Hey, if you have some news to share with us, you can also talk to us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. As always, email is a good, uh, good uh, option. Mm -hmm. Our address is news at NCWLife.com. And, of course, if you see news happening, our breaking news hotline is 888 Take it, Dan. Chilly, 36 degrees outside of our studios, but sunshine all week long. Lower 60s today, mid 60s, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a beautiful weekend coming your way. And look at the sun coming up above Steve's golden, beautiful, tanned head. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. Going to take a quick one minute break. When we come back, sports, you're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Live channel. I came here to CBCH because um, one of my friends referred me. When I met Dr. Jocelyn, she was just amazing. She connected with my son and it meant so much to me. He opens up so quickly because she just sits there and plays with him. It really is like going to see a friend. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted and respected. It just feels like home. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to this Monday edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley. I'm Dan Koontz. Let's do sports. The long travel and several days stay in London didn't affect the Seahawks at all. In fact, they look really good dominating the Raiders yesterday. 27-3, Russell Wilson found three different receivers on touchdown passes. Sebastian Janikowski connected on a couple of field goals. Seahawks defense sacked Derek Carr six times. Oakland had just 79 yards rushing in the victory. The game was supposed to be an Oakland home game. But it looked and sounded a lot like a Seahawks home game. All the 12s present, Coach Pete Carroll surprised by the support. Not only were they so much for us, they were they made it hard on the other guys too, you know, on the other team. So um, for whatever reason, uh, I know that Germany supported us well and, and uh, the people here in Great Britain supported us well. And uh, I'm sure there was a bunch of other people that, you know, that came in yeah, as well as well as our own fans that, that made the trip. So really grateful to them. It made it a really special event today. Seahawks get the week off. They have a bye this Sunday. They don't play again until October 28th, Sunday, when they take on the Lions in Detroit. The Huskies and the Ducks went into overtime on Pac-12 football, Austin Stadium in Eugene on Saturday afternoon. Washington kicking a field goal, and then in overtime, the Ducks' C.J. Verdell scored on a six-yard touchdown run, and that was the difference. The Ducks over the Huskies, 30-27. to Huskies had a chance to win at the end of regulation, but Peyton Henry missed a field goal from 37 yards out. And out in Utah, Weber State shut down Eastern Washington. Uh, they had two interceptions, as a matter of fact, just in the fourth quarter. Screaming Eagles go down to defeat the final. There was 14 to six. And Ellensburg, Riley Hennessy threw for four, three touchdown passes, ran for another Central Washington, no problems at all with Western Oregon, 48 
to 10. Well, the Wenatchee Wild finally celebrated their home opener on Friday night at the Town Toyota Center. They handed out their rings. They dropped the banners or they raised the banners, whatever you want to call it, for their BCHL championship a year ago. And then it was time to play hockey. The Nanaimo Clippers were in town on Friday. And the visitors all too eager to knock off the defending champions with the highlights, the voice of the Wenatchee Wild, our checker. Number 35, Austin Park. And with this banner, we celebrate our championship of the Doyle Cup. And back to Cook again. Sharply down low, Phil Young shoots and he scores! Christophe Fillion from the right circle. Playback underway, shot and a save and then a score, Brian Adams. The first shot was denied. It's gonna be the Merritt Centennials who will be here. There's a shot, oh and it was in. The referee says it was in. That gets broken up and then back into the corner, played by Souter. There's a shot and a score! That went off the body of Blake Barger. We'll keep an eye on Sandquist to see if they pull him for an extra skater. Doors again. He scores! Welcome home, Matt Dorsey. And now back the other way. Here's an outlet feed. And back the other direction. Going hard to the net. In with a shot. Oh, and a score. Right through the five hole. Mackenzie Merriman, his second goal of the game. The Wild had no time to wallow in pity because they had to turn right around and head to Langley Saturday night to take on the Rivermen. And they came away with a 3-0 win, scoring goals from Wenatchee. Lucas Souder, Josh Arnold, and A.J. Hodges. Wenatchee begins a five-game homestand. Merritt will be in town this Friday and Saturday. Speaking of Friday, let's go back to Friday. In prep football, the game featured here on the NCW Live channel, a classic Eastmont hosting Sunny Side. The Wildcats scored first on a 24-yard field goal by Kalen Massey in the first quarter. That made it 10-0 when Massey hit a 56-yard touchdown run. But back came the Grizzlies, quarterback Derek Escamilla, scoring from 17 yards out. That cut the lead to 10-7. Following a successful onside kick, Sunnyside took the lead on Marcus Maldonado's one-yard touchdown run. That made it 13-10. Following Christian Tonga's fumble recovery at the Grizzlies' 16-yard line, Eastman handed to Tonga on a four-yard touchdown run. Wildcats led it. 17 to 13. Escamilla countered with a 49 yard touchdown run of his own. That gave Sunnyside the lead back at 19 to 17. You with me so far? And then Carson Everhart hit Massey on a 33 yard touchdown. That put Eastman up 24 to 19 following an interception. The Wildcats kicked another field goal 28 yards. That made it 27 to 19. And that was just halftime. <laughs> we'll pick up the highlights with just over five minutes left in the third quarter. Eric Grandstrom and Grant Olson were there on the NCW Live channel. Ball left hash mark at the 14-yard line. Escamilla looks to his right, wants to throw that way. Now being flushed out of the pocket. He's going to throw back across the field. Dangerous pass. The ball caught in the end zone. Oh. And it's a touchdown. Holy wow. cow. How did that get in there? Isaac Brionis comes up with the ball in a sea of blue jerseys. Dangerous pass, but somehow comes down with the ball. I don't know how that wasn't intercepted. There were three blue shirts in the end zone around Brionis. He goes up, makes the catch. Wildcats trying to knock it out of his hands, and he made uh, retained possession and made that great catch for a touchdown. See if they just go for an alley-oop to the end zone. Escamilla looking left, throwing left, the ball caught. And then into the end zone, it is good on the two-point conversion. And Massey's just going to pooch punt this. It's going to hit inside the 10. It's going to dive down at the 5 and going to be dead at the one-yard wow. line. And you like that if you're the Wildcats defensively here because that pushes their punter back inside the uh, his own end zone. High snap. The ball blocked. blocked. It's in the end zone, and it will be covered by Eastmont. And it's a touchdown. Wow. How about that? The snap looked great, great penetration by the special teams of the Eastmont Wildcats. High snap and the ball was blocked for Eastmont by Dominic Torres and the Wildcats recover in the end zone and the recovery by Christian Tonga. <laughs> <laughs> and he's celebrating out there as he should. So here we go, game time. Fourth down, 15, two minutes left. In regulation, Eastmont up by a touchdown. 
Escamilla in the shotgun. Back to pass. Looks right. Wants to heave for it all. Looking for the sideline. The ball is going to be intercepted back there by Jessup, I believe, for the Wildcats. He'll hand the ball off on the return to the 15-20. 25. Coming near side. It's McElwain to the 35. Still on his feet and finally taken down at the 40-yard line. How about the Eastmont defense? Wow. Number one in the Big Nine for a reason. And they make the stop that could win this football game. What a great heads-up play, too, by Jessup just to hand it to McElwain, somebody was holding on to his leg. Why not give it to him and gain another 30 to 35 yards by doing it? Eastmont gets the victory. They are now 6-1 and one overall, 3-0 and oh in league play. To the Les Schwab scoreboard we go. Prep action on Friday. There you go, Nate Blauman. 18 carries, 190 yards. Panthers walloped Davis 41 to nothing. Make it five in a row for the Wenatchee Panthers. They're 4-0 oh in big nine play. Cascade rushed for 370 yards. Ed Shalan, 34 to 28. Okanagan picked off three passes. They rumbled their way to a 33 to 7 victory over Kashmir. And Lake Roosevelt knocked off Manson, 33 to 7. And Waterville Mansfield losing to Andy at the final there was 68 to 24. Here's what we have on score for, uh, on store for you uh, this week on the NCAA Life Channel. It begins tomorrow night. Eastmont, the, uh, the, the gymnasium, the Wildcats will host Eisenhower, Big Nine Volleyball, 7 o'clock. Then it's the rematch. Eastmont at Wenatchee. Volleyball Thursday at 7, and then Friday, Eastmont hosting Eisenhower at Wildcat Stadium. Pre-game at 6.45, kickoff at 7 o'clock. Yep, Eric and Grant will be there as well. Can't forget about Major League Baseball playoffs. Boston rebounded with a 7-5 win in Game 2 last night. So the American League Championship Series is tied to the Game of Peace. Game 3 tomorrow in Houston. Game 3 of the National League Championship Series today at Los Angeles. Good seats still available. Dodgers and Brewers tied at a Game of Peace. And that's sports and just some of the games that people are playing. At 31 minutes after the hour, the obscure holiday of the day today is National Clean Out Your Virtual Desktop Day. That kind of looks like mine at home. <laughs> mine at work, I try and keep clean because we share computers. If somebody needs to get in on my computer, they got to be able to find what they're looking for. But at home, that's pretty much what my desktop looks like. Where's the file? I can't find it because I got junk all over my desktop. So just, you know, take a little time. Finding the files can be difficult enough. When you have a desktop that looks like that, first of all, you can't find the file. Second of all, you can't find your screensaver. That beautiful sunny beach shot or the shot of the mountain that you have as your screensaver is disappeared with icons. So uh, spend some time today and clean out your virtual desktop. It's a good time to do that on a Monday. Beats working. 32 minutes after the hour today in history. October 15th, 1815, 203 years ago, poor Napoleon. Yeah, they sent him off to begin his exile, his final exile on St. Helena in the Atlantic Ocean. He was first, of course, exiled a few years earlier to Elba. That didn't work out too good. It was way too close to the European mainland. Of course, he came back, and then he didn't. And the British said, okay, this time we're going to exile you in the middle of nowhere. So they found the most desolate island they could find, and they sent him off to St. Helena where he lived the rest of his life. Uh, it began on the state October 15, 1815. Happy birthday to LaGuardia International Airport. Only it's not an international airport. It's just an airport. New York Municipal Airport, later renamed LaGuardia Airport, opened air traffic on October 15, 1939. Most airline pilots and passengers consider it the worst airport in the U.S. Uh, by the way, they're replacing LaGuardia in its entirety. They started that project two years ago, and it's going to take them about five more years and then LaGuardia will be all new, but it opened on the state October 15, 1939. 67 years ago today, I love Lucy and she loves me. I love Lucy. The very first episode aired on the Columbia Broadcasting System. Lucille Ball, Desi Arnaz, Vivian Vance, and William Frawley. It was the very first scripted television show shot on 35 millimeter film in front of a studio audience, which is about how all the shows are done now today. I Love Lucy aired for the very first time 67 years ago today. And Steve Hare, this one's for you. The 30th anniversary is today, October 15, 1988. Two outs, bottom of the ninth inning, Kirk Gibson, a two-run pinch hit home run off Dennis Eckersley, LA 5, Dodgers 4, Game 1 of the World Series. And finally, birthdays today. Got three of them for you. When I think about great Estonian uh, race car drivers, race car drivers from Estonia, I, like everybody else, think of Ot Tanak. Yeah, Ot Tanak is 31 years old today. Internationally renowned uh, Estonian race car driver. Uh, Joan G. Yoon is, uh, is celebrating her 28th birthday today. Very well-known uh, South Korean rapper, singer, songwriter, and actress. I decided to go with people that everybody knew. And that, of course, means also Little Klein. Little Klein is a Dutch rapper. Uh, Little Klein is 24. 
years old today. I'm always accused of having dead white guys for my birthdays. Took care of that little problem. Uh, we have an alive white guy. His name is Mike McNaughty. We'll find out what's on his mind in my conversation with Darcy Christofferson. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Localtel. Chelan Chase is this Saturday at Riverwalk Park. Proceeds from this 5K race run walk will benefit hospitals and cancer patients. Also Saturday, the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center will be hosting a free art class from 11 to 12. Learn how to draw using a continuous line like Swiss German artist Paul Klee. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Check the clocks and grab the ice melt. Winter weather is here. This is Corey at Rose Tractor. If you're looking for a reliable way to clear snow, look no further than Cub Cadet. For sidewalks and driveways, a Cub Cadet snow thrower will get the job done in a jiffy. For larger jobs, a Cub Cadet Challenger utility vehicle with a snow blade will handle about anything. You can depend on Cub Cadet for years of reliable performance and we'll help you select the best model for your job at Rose Tractor, family-run business at the corner of 3rd and Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, like I've said before, 75% of us folks here in the good old U.S. of A. call ourselves Christian. Well, that's fine, I guess, but what's really tragic is that there are people who don't realize that the true test of loving and sacrificing for others and doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, etc., that's first and foremost to be displayed at home to your family. You know, it really doesn't matter who outside your family thinks you're a wonderful person. If your spouse and your kids don't think so, or if your parents and siblings think you're a jerk, you're missing it as far as your Christianity and your love for your fellow man is concerned. If it isn't first and foremost demonstrated to those closest to you, let's face it, it's meaningless. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <clears throat> Life is about memories and lasting impressions. With Boswell's expansive two-story showroom of quality home furnishings, you'll find everything you need to create a home to remember. Need assistance? From fabric options and complimentary design service to complete home makeovers, Glenn, Buffy, and Teresa are there to guide you. Come into Boswell's and find inspiration and comfort for every room in your home. Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Only one country can build a truck like this. Designed in California, engineered in Michigan, tested in Arizona, and assembled in Mississippi. Powered by Cummins of Indiana. The all new Nissan Titan. It's an American classic. Is it on your list? Come down and see us at Town Nissan behind Costco in East Wenatchee. I'll be with you in apple blossom time. Yes, I was one of the Andrews sisters, till I found out I was a guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we'd love to talk apple blossom with Darcy Christopherson, and by golly, we're doing it again today. She is the festival administrator, and the 100th Apple Blossom Festival, the Centennial, is coming up the last weekend in April and the first weekend in May. And here to talk all things apple blossom with her regularly scheduled visit is Darcy Christopherson. Danny, say hi. Hi. Darcy, say hi. 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 <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, really, really well. Let's go chronologically because we're now into October, and on October 27th is the first 
gig. Gig, really, yeah. of your year, yeah, I guess, is, is the Apple Blossom auction. Yeah, our, our fiscal year starts September 1, so our kickoff to our year is our auction. It's our 23rd year of doing our auction, and we have about 35 tables sold already. Oh, wow. And we can really only sell about 40 because we have so much stuff in in the cent Wenatchee Center that we can't have too many tables. So. Mm -hmm. Um, our goal, of course, is 40 so if you're interested in, in going to this fun night, it's $50 a ticket, or you can buy a table of 10 for $500. It's a Halloween theme this year, so everyone loves the Halloween theme um, and loves dressing up. Uh, we have over 300 items. We haven't figured out all of our live stuff yet, um, but we have some pretty cool, cool things. And then, we, of course, we have lots of games and lots of fun things that we, we do throughout the night. But it really is... Um, one of the most fun things we do, and it's a huge fundraiser for us. It it gets us to our, our royalty scholarships, and with our 100th coming, um, we have a lot extra expenses that we normally don't have for mm -hmm. the festival, so this auction will really help us uh, with that. Same deal as the last couple of years. You've kind of toned down the live auction part of it, and you've ratcheted up the silent auction part of it, right? Yeah, we just kind of learned that, you know, you don't need 25 live items. You just need, like, 12 really awesome live items. So that's kind of what we've done, and it actually has made us more money because then we have some really cool silent stuff, too. So um, it's always fun watching the, the fights of... <laughs> of Last year it was a Yeti cooler that everybody was fighting over, and, and this refrigerator, this Coors Light refrigerator, I think was another thing that everybody was fighting over. So it's always kind of fun to watch the, the well, I don't mean fighting, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it, um, friendly competition. <laughs> but it's always fun to watch everybody kind of run back and forth to the different sections. So Who's uh, the auctioneer? The auctioneer's Cody Hodge. Well, there yep, you go. Yep, yeah. Cody Hodge. I, th I think I've only had Cody not be there one year, and yeah. I can't remember why he wasn't, but... You know, Cody makes us a lot of money. He, yeah. he does he's, really... First of all, he's incredibly good at what yes, he does. he's amazing. And he's entertaining as he all is. get out. And he knows everybody, so yeah. he points fingers at, you need to spend more money, you need to spend more money. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't imagine our auction without Cody. And then our MC will be Ron Bershauer. Good. So, um, yeah, so we're excited. So we just really encourage people that want to come and have some fun and kick off this Apple Blossom Festival to come to the auction, or you can donate an item. You know, if you're a business that you know, isn't participating in the Apple Blossom Festival as a sponsor, this is a great way to, to do it. You know, you donate a $300 item and then you're a sponsor at that level throughout the whole year. So. And that's how a lot of people initially yeah. get involved with the festival. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they gave you uh, something with a retail value of $400 and 20 years later, they're director general. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, happened. it's very yeah. true. Or they'll say, okay, I'll throw in $400 and then I'll give you $100 in cash. So, right. so that's really, you're, you're right, how a lot of our sponsors continue to sponsor is is by just donating the auction first. Um, before I forget, food and drink? Oh yes, um, it's a buffet dinner, and then we have hosted beer, and then of course a no host bar. And then all kinds of games, you know, we have Quino. Quino's back. There might be a little something in your Quino cup that you might get when you when you buy mm -hmm. your Quino number, but And yeah. for those of you who just, uh, you have the raffle too, right? I mean, We have a raffle, raffle right. um, we have heads and tails. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just lots of fun. It's so fast too. I mean, yeah. it's not you're not bored by it's any means that night. Who, who chairs the auction this year? Because yeah. uh, Dina's actually chairing okay, it. You wow. know, she chaired it before, and um, you know, she is the director general, Dina Bollinger. But the the auction is kind of more of a, a staff type mm -hmm. thing um, with the items coming in and and the program. That was the first thing my my new assistant got to learn was the auction program. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, here, here you go, day one. But um, it's it's kind of more of a staff thing, and Dina just kind of does the decorations and and the work that they put in is insane. It's, it's I've seen crazy. it. I've seen you you kids on the setup and the teardown. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's yeah, it's. But we we've done it for so long that it just kind of happens mm -hmm. in our world. But it is a lot of work. A lot of work. Exciting news last week um, for the centennial of the Apple Blossom Festival. The Queen and the two princesses, their scholarship money has gone up. Yeah. In fact, quite a bit up. Quite a bit up, yes. This is something that we, the festival, and the Wenatchee Appalarians have talked about uh, the last few years. Uh, but we didn't want to do it where we gave the princesses more money and the Wenatchee Appalarians weren't able to give the Queen more money. So we said, okay, we need to come up with like a three-year plan to make this happen. And it would be great if it was for the 100th and, 
and the Apollarians made it happen and we made it happen. So the Queen will receive a ten thousand dollar scholarship. It used to be six. And it used to be six. Right. And the princesses will receive a five thousand dollar scholarship and that used to be thirty five hundred. So Well that's good. I know. I yeah. know. I'm super excited as you know. I mean the cost of college is outrageous. You know, we have three in college right now and mm. it's like, ugh. Um, but we, we believe these girls work so hard uh, during their reign and a lot of times they can't have a summer job because mm -hmm. they're going to festivals and uh, so we just really wanted to, to get that dollar amount up to you know, make it happen. And that's for the them. first thing that the prospective senior girls at Wenatchee and Eastmont or homeschooled or River County, that's the first thing they learn when they go to the mandatory meetings yep. coming up in, uh, in November. This isn't, this isn't a vacation. This is hard work, but if you're if you're dedicated and you really want to go far, first of all, if you get the queen, you get the ten thousand dollars scholarship. But that's the first lesson that you teach them when you get together at the Wenatchee Convention Center uh, next month. Is that if you're in, this is what you can expect. Yeah, and and you know we we have that meeting and we sit down with the the girls and we sit down with uh, their parents and go over all of this. But I think it's one of those things that you still never know until you do it. You know, it's just it is like a job. I mean, you. You are busy every single day when you become a royalty member. And really when you're top 10 also, you know, that the whole month of January, yeah. you're busy doing other things. And really being a part of Apple Blossom, besides school, comes first. So we make that very, very clear. And that's why we decided that it was time to, to raise the scholarship. But it changes your life forever. It does forever, change your life. Doesn't you it? know, Greta went through Rush at Wazoo. Good. And she's like, it was so easy because I did it already. You know, I did all of that already by running for Apple Blossom. So, um, you know, it helps you so much later in life, job interviews, sure. whatever it is. So, you become a very accomplished um, young woman. And then before you know it, you're leading the community in any number of ways, Darcy. It was, it was, it was royalty. But um, they're all, I mean, all of the, all of, you know, I go all the way back to, to Sharon Utegaard and, and, mm -hmm. and Albertson Deal and all the way through. I mean, I know Krista all of Beck, these ladies. Megan yeah. Vibber, you yeah, know, these, these, these young ladies um, that become women uh -huh. still um, are mentors to yeah. our, our royalty programs. So. A certain Julie Coons. Yep, Julie Same Coons, Del so. Haley. I mean, sure. there's just so many yeah. of them. And whether, you know, Kaylee O'Kelly, Anita Hartog, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're out there. Lindsay France, you know, they're sure. out there as as newscasters and doing amazing things and it's really great for this generation to see these these women from the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. you know succeed and a lot of the reason why they are succeeding is because they had that first step with apple blossom and it's amazing how much the top 10 candidates grow just in the one month when they okay you're in the top 10 and the cash and relevant royalty selection pageant is here and this is the the way they go that even that one month they they change they dramatically do. They blossom. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so but they really do, and that's my that's the most <clears throat> fun thing for me is I love that top ten process. And it's not just watching the three girls that continue on to royalty blossom, but it really is the the remaining seven. That's that's the most fun part for me is that this girl would never have been able to get in front of a thousand people and give the speech and and do the judging process all day long if it wasn't for the three week journey that that we put her through and it's just so much fun seeing that and those are my favorite thank you notes is uh from the girls that didn't continue under royalty and how being just in the top 10 changed their life and change their perspective of what they want to do later in life. And so. we still get thank you notes, which yeah. is really cool. We get yeah. notes and handwritten, they're handwritten notes. notes from you the. You always get handwritten <coughs> notes from that's us. A, that's a classic. You touch. will not get text messages. Well, we're right. talking about royalty with the centennial coming up um, with the, with this Milk Growers Grand Parade and the 100th Apple, Apple Blossom Festival. Obviously, you're bringing back as much royalty as you can possibly bring back, bring back for the parade. How is that process going? It's going. It's going. We've kind of uh, waited to do the uh, sign up application process process until after the auction just for us for for paperwork but um, you know I've sent out emails to all the past director generals chancellors chaperones and of course past royalty and the emails are coming in saying I'm coming I'm coming so uh, once the auctions over then we'll have a better plan of, of who actually is coming home but we'll have our our festival dance on Friday and um, the public is invited it's not just about 
the past royalty and chaperones and director generals and chancellors. It's, you know, open to the community. And Matt Cadman will be the MC for oh, that really? event. So that'll be really kind of well, fun. Well, he's kind of, a, kind of shy. Kind of I know. Wallflower. I was really worried about Ooh, that. <laughs> but he'll be the MC, so he's super excited. He has a lot of tradition growing up in Wenatchee mm -hmm. with the festival ball, actually. Yep. He was an escort back in the 70s. And, um, so, yeah, we're super excited. So once the auction's over, then we'll kind of get back in the transition of the hundredth and the documentary is going great. Our, uh, the downstairs of our office has turned into a studio. Okay. So uh, the North 40 guys have been interviewing all kinds of people, uh, getting information about the festival and why people volunteer and why they love the royalty process so much. So it's been kind of fun seeing people wander through. So. You brought up an important point, Darcy. <laughs> we don't talk about this nearly enough. Darcy has a staff. It's Darcy and it's... Um, Aaron. Aaron. Yep. Uh, you got the new, new person mm -hmm. in there as well. Um, but our, Darcy is answerable to a board of directors, and it's the board of directors who are the overseers. And the Appalarians are the host, you know, and, and, and they all kind of tie in together. But uh, the board of directors are all volunteers, yep. and they're, they're your bosses. Yep, they are. Yeah, Dina Bollinger is my boss right now. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, 11 other board members. And they're very busy. You know, they take this auction very serious because they know, again, how much money it makes us to continue throughout the year. Um, so yeah, we're we're a busy board. We meet once once a month, and then you know you sign up for everything as a board member. You got to work right. the beer garden. You got to work in the information booth. Help out with the the auction. Either you go and spend money, or <laughs> or you volunteer and help. So that's the rule as a board member. You either spend a lot of money, or you spend a lot of hours helping us. <laughs> right. Uh, this is kind of cool. This is an email from, from Glenn Widener, who's the uh, retired battalion chief, and he came up with this little idea. Um, you want to explain it? Uh, well, I don't know all of it yet. Well, we, I all, mean, know, he, we, we he, all know about the Seafair yes, Pirates, yes. and they come all, all they, the time. They do. They, they come do. with their big ship, and they go down the parade route, and they fire the cannon off and scare me. Um, <laughs> but uh, Glenn came up with this idea. Uh, he kind of, combination of the Shriners and their little cars, and the uh, Seafair Pirates, and he just had to come up with Apple Blossom Clowns, yep. a, a, a sanction. He, he said he floated this by idea by Darcy, and you said, go for it, Glenn. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a great idea, so great idea. Glenn's so. looking for prospective clowns. And unlike the Seafair Pirates, which is like a year-round organization that are constantly going out and doing fundraisers and visiting kids in hospitals and stuff, this is just a two or three week commitment around the Apple Blossom Festival. Right. Dress up like a, a clown and Go have fun. Yeah, yeah. So if you're interested, if you think you might like to be an apple blossom clown for the centennial, and I, I love this idea, uh, get a hold of Glenn or email me or Facebook message me or get a hold of us here at the NCW Live channel, and I'll get you in touch with Glenn, whose clown name is Matches. <laughs> I love which that. Which makes perfect sense for I a guy who that. fought fires for 35 years. So let's see, yeah, let's see if we can get this apple blossom clown organization. And there uh, is up and running. there is a rumor out there that there will be an alumni band Ooh. of the possible Wenatchee and Eastmont bands. That would be cool. I know, I that know. That would be cool. So, um, well, I'll. Is there anything? I mean, well, now you're talking parade a little bit here. I mean, it's the 100th. What else is? is I'm not is telling that? yet. I'm not telling okay. yet. Um, have you picked a grand marshal I'm yet? I'm not telling yet. It's Maybe only local, October. We don't announce those celebrity? things. I for don't know. <laughs> uh, Apple Blossom Auction on the 27th. Mandatory meetings on uh, October 27th. November 27th is mandatory yep. meetings. The top 10 announcement is January 9th. Uh, Pageant is February 9th. Pageant is February 9th. Yep. Uh, what, uh, what? 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 Am I forgetting that, and anything? Always go to our website, appleblossom.org, everything. And we already have the royalty manual on the website. So if you're thinking about running for Apple Blossom Royalty, you can check out the, the manual and get an idea of, of what it involves to be in Apple don't Blossom Royalty. Don't print it up. It's 87 pages. Yeah, don't print it. <laughs> just read it. <laughs> um, and then uh, our app also, you can go and, and download our app, which a big thank you to Crunch Pack for sponsoring mm. that. So. There's no excuse to not know what's happening during Apple Blossom because everything is on our website and on our app. And of course, you can always call us at 662-3616 or come by our office at 2 South Chelan Street. Their brand new remodeled office. Newly remodeled office, office yeah. thanks to the <coughs> city of Wenatchee. Are they doing for, some landscaping? I saw some pictures well, out there. Well, there was a tree that was oh, yeah. falling. Right. So they had to get the tree. You know what it's like in a remodel? Mm -hmm. You think it's only going to take three weeks and then and it And then tends. you find something behind a wall. So this three yeah. week project has yeah. turned into a three month project okay. and sidewalks coming up because the roots are too yep. big and 
Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, the city, we want to thank them, the city of Wenatchee, because this, like I said, this little project has mm -hmm. become this big project. But it is a historic building. Yeah. So it does need to be spruced up, mm -hmm. right? So you tell your brother that. When, well, it's funny because when, uh, <laughs> when he's complaining. I was talking to my brother last week. He, I go, you know, how's it going? He goes, you know what I discovered? He goes, Darcy and Shiloh pretty much run this town. <laughs> and I just, you know, I show up at city council meetings every once That's in a so while. That's so not true. <laughs> So not true. I just asked for paint and carpet, and it just got a little out of hand. <laughs> One last question. I'm going to cut you loose. Uh, as an East Montreal, what's it like to sit and the, leave off the field of the Apple Bowl and cheer on the Panthers? Well, you know, when your kids play yeah. Yeah. as a Panther, you yeah. just kind of, um, you know, forget all that. Mm -hmm. But when it's East Mont and Wenatchee, I always sing the the Eastmont fight song. Well, yeah, because you're, I mean, I mean that's your alma like, mater. That's, yeah, that's absolutely I, I totally always acceptable. Sing, and a lot of my parent friends at mm -hmm. Wenatchee are Eastmont alumni. So, you know, we'll, we'll... It's not, it's not like it used to be. And, and by that I mean it's better because these kids all know each other. Yes, When I was absolutely. in high school, when Darcy was in high school, right. we never played each other. They we were in different never. leagues and different... And I think it's better. I yeah. think these kids know each other. They've played youth football together yep. and, and they, they've done organizations and groups, be it scouting or whatever, so they all know. It's, it's I mean, like, they definitely want to beat each other. And yeah. I think this year, the Eastmont Wenatchee game oh, it's gonna be epic. Be, will it's be great epic. just because it, it's well, going to come. Last year's was. Yeah. It was a It'll great game come last down year. to yeah. something We're talking this football. year. Yeah. But, but no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a wild cat and a willy cat, yeah. so That's always will be. That's perfectly acceptable. Be that. And of course, Erin Boatwright, who I just yeah. hired, she's a graduate from 2014 from okay. Eastmont. So these Eastmont girls, you know, going we great got guns. It. We got it. But go Pan Panthers, Panthers this weekend. It, we're all, it's all one big. This we're, is why yeah, this show is called big, Wake Up Wenatchee that's right. Valley. That's exactly. why we call we're it Exactly. We're one that. big. And we do. We want both. <laughs> it's just like the Huskies and the Cougars. I am not. Yeah. And even though I have a daughter that's a Cougar now, mm. I still love the Huskies. Oh, sure. And you always will. Because we have kids that play on that yeah. team. and yeah. So I root for both. Yep. So. Right down the middle. <laughs> uh, all right. So I see you again soon. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I okay. won't see you till November. Okay. But, so it'll be after the auction, and then we'll really okay. talk, talk royalty and documentary, cool. and maybe we'll have a little, little something, something oh, that we can show the documentary. Yes, if you could give us just, yeah, just like a, 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 a four-minute clip, yeah. I would. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because we are, we'll have something for the auction, mm -hmm. so I can replay it for you Good. in November. Good. I'll be with you in Apple Blossom time. <laughs> I'm not saying uh, Darcy, say bye. Bye-bye-bye. Kenny, say bye. We'll be right back. Time to replace your home comfort system? This Lennox dealer can help. If it's time to replace your old furnace or air conditioner, Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling gives free estimates. Call Patriot today. Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling will give your home a hug. Get up to $1,600 in rebates or special financing. Find it all at Wenatchee Valley Mall. There's something for all ages at Wenatchee Valley Mall. No matter what the weather, the kids will have fun in one of the many play areas around the mall. Sign your kids up for fun adventures and super specials when they join the Kids Club. It's a great time for kids and an even better time out for parents. Check out specials and events 24-7 at WenatcheeValleyMall.com. It's your Wenatchee Valley Mall. Come shop today. And we're back at it live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee and Wake Up Wenatchee Valley in this Monday. Temperatures around the region, 37 outside of our studios. Moses Lake here, 30 degrees. Cashmere, 34. Downtown Palisades, 32. It's chilly, but it's going to be a beautiful stretch of weather. Let's take a look at it from the National Weather Service. Sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. Mild temperatures about normal today. You see that high of 63? That's about where we should be uh, in the middle of October. And then slightly above normal on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday. Ridge of high pressure is strong, it's persisting, there's nothing out there to knock it out of whack or flatten it out, so clear skies, dry weather, light winds outside of chilly mornings, and that's to be expected this time of the year. Nothing but sunshine and beautiful skies right through Sunday. A couple of high clouds will be passing by here and there, and that's really, really about it. No complaints at all. 
as we are deep now into October. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the, the fall colors are at their absolute peak. Go out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Don't forget Street Talk and other stuff with Mike Magdog McNaughty at 10 o'clock. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.